But right now, our other main story today, the regional airline Flybe has gone into administration, putting thousands of jobs at risk after talks to try to save it failed. Its website now advises customers to not travel to the airport unless they have arranged an alternative flight. The carrier had tried to secure a rescue package from the government during a day of crisis talks. Writing to staff, the company said the coronavirus had put additional pressure on an already difficult situation. Our news correspondent Charlotte Rose reports. In the darkness, Europe's largest regional airline lost its battle for survival. We would like to thank you for your patience and understanding of what has been a very difficult day. This flight from Manchester to Belfast may have been the last. Most people here are more concerned about the staff themselves. We've seen some of them in tears. Um, they too will be fully aware of what's going on outside of here. Flybe's collapse last night means all flights are now grounded, with the loss of 2,000 jobs. When did you first hear? Um, early hours of the morning. It's quite, quite a shock. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that we'd be saved, but not this time. Sorry. Outbound passengers have been warned not to come to the airport as flights won't be departing. But for some this morning, the news came too late. We're just so surprised. We, we didn't pay any attention to the tickets because it said Air France on them and I naively didn't realise that Air France were tied in with Flybe. We can't fly from here. There's no other airlines from here that will fly to Jersey. So, you know, we've been floated options like ferries or essentially a different airport. But with Jersey, there isn't really that many options. Unlike the collapse of other travel operators Monarch and Thomas Cook, the Civil Aviation Authority is not putting on flights to bring people home. For those now stuck abroad, other airlines have offered to step in. EasyJet says it will offer a dedicated rescue fee for Flybe passengers of £65 for return to the UK. People with future flights booked with Flybe are being urged to contact their travel agent or tour operator or debit or credit card company to check how they can claim money back. And already the blame game has begun. Flybe ran into financial trouble in February last year. At the start of this year, it asked the government for financial assistance. Ministers said they would help and looked at delaying payments of air passenger duty due from the firm. But now the company says the impact of coronavirus on future bookings has made its future unviable. We really tried to do everything that we possibly could back at the turn of the year. And uh, unfortunately, though, with the situation that's developed with uh, corona, an already weak company, I'm afraid, just hasn't been able to survive. But unions say the government could and should have done more. I think for the government to allow uh, an airline of this significance to collapse in these circumstances is its first real test of going from campaigning to the realities of government. And it's a real test of its levelling up agenda. So we're going to be asking some searching questions about why this has happened so quickly and what this means for the communities and our members directly. Some regional airports say they've already had other operators express interest in taking over flyby routes. But for passengers facing chaos today, such offers will come too late. Charlotte Rose, BBC News. Well, let's go now to Exeter Airport. Our correspondent Katie Austin is there. Katie, a double blow for Exeter at the airport itself, of course, and because flyby headquarters just down the road from where you are now. Yes, that's right. Um, here at Exeter Airport, it's very quiet today, really. Not many people around. And if you look at the departure boards, you can see why. Uh, this is page two of two. The first page is also full of red cancellations because nearly all the flights operating out of here, whether they were from uh, to Amsterdam or to Manchester or Newcastle, etc., most of them were going to be Flybe. So with Flybe ceasing trading, this airport has gone very quiet. And just over here where the check-in desks used to be, you can see some of the the purple branded uh, fixtures or items being removed now. Now, for an area like Exeter in the southwest, this is a really important airport because of the connections it provides that, frankly, you'd have had to travel for, for hours further to get those connections without being, to take, being able to take a flight. For example, if you go to Glasgow, it's an hour and a half on a direct flight compared to about seven hours on the train. So for business people or just, you know, travellers going for tourism reasons, 
they're really hoping that another airline can come in and fill those gaps, cover the routes that Flybe will leave behind. But most importantly as well today, there are lots of people whose jobs are seriously at risk following the airline's collapse. And today uh, in the airport building, I spoke to one of member of the cabin crew and she told me she was absolutely distraught at the news. Just all really sad, aren't we? <laughs> Just really sad. So I'm taking it from your outfit, are you cabin crew? Yeah, yeah, we'll be cabin crew. And how long have you worked for Flybe? Um, 13 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's like straight up college, really. So it's not sure what we're going to do now. And when, d- when did you first hear? Um, early hours of the morning. It's quite, quite a shock. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that we'd be saved, but not this time. Sorry. Well, there's been a joint statement issued by local councils in this area today, and they call today's news a hammer blow to the local economy, as well as being very sad for staff who are affected. Those councils have called on the government to do whatever they can to try and get other airlines in. I've spoken to the managing director of Exeter Airport today. He said discussions are ongoing with potential other airlines. It's very unclear how developed any plans might be at this stage or when we'll get news about when other airlines might step in to cover some routes. It's a very difficult time for the airline industry, of course, at the moment because the impact of the coronavirus outbreak, which ultimately probably triggered the demise of Flybe, well, that's been affecting other airlines lines as well. So we'll have to wait and see how many routes can be covered, whether this airport gets back to the capacity it has seen up till now. And the government has said that it'll be trying to help people who've lost their jobs uh, progress into other roles where they can. And it's saying as well that it hopes rail and bus operators should be accepting flyby tickets where they can. Of course, that won't help you if you are planning on getting a flight from here to Amsterdam or somewhere else outside the UK today. Okay, Katie, thank you very much for that. Katie Austin. Well, let's get reaction now from uh, another location affected by this collapse. We're joined by the CEO of Ports of Jersey, Matt Thomas, who joins us from Jersey Airport. Matt, uh, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. We saw a few minutes ago in an earlier report passengers talking about uh, there being no other flight available from the airport they were at to get to Jersey. Just how crucial, first of all, was Flybe to the operation of the airport there? Yeah, it's an important uh, airline partner for us, and it's a sad day. You know, Flybe have their origins in the Channel Islands, so um, it's very much uh, marks the end of one chapter and the start of another for us. But we operate in a very, very competitive marketplace, and I think uh, in Jersey's case, uh, our passenger numbers are at record highs. Um, unfortunately, this is a step back today. So, with passenger numbers then at record highs, who is going to serve them in terms of uh, carriers? Uh, we are lucky we have a range of carriers that operate in Jersey and we're very active. I think we're quite lucky that uh, Jersey is a very popular destination and actually the airlines were making money here. So we're actively looking and speaking to other airlines to replace those routes. But, uh, you know, that's no uh, consolation to the staff of FlyB today or people who have bookings um, that aren't going to be fulfilled. You know, so our priority is helping them at the moment and uh, Ma- the replacement in the capacity will come next. Matt, I'm sorry to interrupt you because we are going to go to the Commons to hear Transport Minister uh, Kelly Tolhurst speaking about this. It's a commercial decision by the company and Flybe have filed for insolvency. UK airports handled 9.5 million Flybe passengers in 2008 and 80% of these travelling within the UK. An estimated 15,000 passengers were due to fly today, so our immediate priority is to support passengers travelling home and employees who have lost their jobs. FlyB has had a challenging year in terms of its financial performance, with a decline in bookings and increased competition. Levelling up connectivity across our regions and nations is a top priority for this Government. We are driving forward HS2 and Northern Powerhouse Rail and we have announced £5 billion funding package for bus and cycle links and we are investing £6.6 billion to improve the condition of local highway networks between 2015 and 2021. We are undertaking a review of regional connectivity to ensure the UK has the domestic transport connections local communities rely on. 
including regional airports. The Treasury is also reviewing air passenger duty APD, to ensure regional connectivity is supported whilst meeting the UK's climate change commitment to meet net zero by 2050. These measures featured in conversations with Flybe back in January, and in turn they agreed to continue operating. <coughs> Since then, we have been working tirelessly to explore multiple op options with Flybe shareholders to find a solution. Flybe outlined that problems with their business have been compounded by the outbreak of coronavirus, which in the last few days has resulted in significant impact on demand. The directors, therefore, decided it was not viable to keep Flybe operating. Unfortunately, in a competitive market, companies do fail, and it is not the role of government to prop them up. Given the time of the year, the nature of Flybe's business and fleet, and the route it flies, sufficient alternative transport arrangements should be available, either with other airlines or by road and rail. The number of passengers abroad is small and it is further reduced as a result of coronavirus. For those passengers who are abroad, there is sufficient capacity on commercial airlines to return to the UK. The Civil Aviation Authority and the Secretary of State are encouraging these airlines to offer, res to offer rescue fares, and this is already happening. I would like to thank those, including EasyJet, which have today announced it will offer Flybe passengers a dedicated rescue fare up until the end of May. We are working with bus and rail operators to support Flybe passengers in getting to their destinations, and I'm extremely grateful that the Rail Delivery Group has this morning confirmed that all operators are offering free travel to Flybe staff and passengers for a week free of charge. For passengers due to fly with Flybe in the next few days, I would ask that they do not turn up at the airport. They should instead please look at the website set up by the Civil Aviation Authority and to talk to their travel agents, travel insurance providers and credit card companies. For those that do arrive at UK airports today, we are making government representatives available to offer support and provide information to passengers affected. I would like to express my sincere sympathy to those who have lost their jobs as a result of this failure. This will include crew, engineers, technicians, staff at Flybe headquarters in Exeter and others. We understand that this is a worrying time for workers and their families. The Department of Work and Pensions stands ready to support anyone affected by the closure and their rapid response service offer. This will be available to all those affected through the local job centre plus outlets. Additionally, in the event of any redundancies, there are special arrangements for employees who are owed redundancy payments and other payments by their insolvent employer. The redundancy ser uh, payment service in the insolvency service can pay certain amounts owed to former employees that it will respond as effectively as it always has. We are urgently working with industry to identify opportunities to fill routes, and I have spoken to the airlines today to emphasise this. Globally, aviation is facing challenges due to the impact of coronavirus. The Government is well prepared for this, and as the wider economic picture becomes clearer, the Chancellor has said that he stands ready to announce further support where needed. I will be chairing a roundtable with members of the aviation industry next week to discuss issues presented by coronavirus. I would like to take this opportunity to thank passengers for their patience and make known my appreciation for the work undertaken by everyone who has again stepped up to ensure that passengers and local communities are supported. We will continue to work across government to ensure that both passengers and staff are able to access the information and services they require at this sad and challenging time. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. The collapse of Fly B is disastrous news for passengers passengers and employees alike and will cause real anxiety in many regions throughout this country. The loss of 2,000 uh, jobs, many in areas reliant, very heavily reliant on aviation, uh, uh, will be an extremely heavy blow, as will the wider impact upon supply chains and regional economies. I think around 2,000 direct jobs uh, are due to be lost 
uh, from this collapse. So what steps is the Minister taking to help those workers find new jobs? Sadly, Flybe follows an ever-growing list of British airlines to go under in recent years. And we know that the Civil Aviation Authority have time and again made monumental efforts to look after passengers. Will the government draw on the skills and expertise of the CAA if existing capacity uh, does not prove to be sufficient to guarantee that every flyby passenger gets home safely? We must also recognise as well the generous officers, uh, offers rather, of assistance from other businesses uh, to support flyby staff and passengers. But yet again, airline workers face an anxious and uncertain future, whilst the government has sat on its hands and allowed this to happen. Recent airline failures have already lost approximately 11,000 jobs. The government must respond this time and provide Flybe staff with all the necessary support. Flybe has said the impact of the coronavirus has contributed to its collapse. So I must ask the Minister, what assessment has she made of the risk to other airlines uh, and what preparations are now in place? Flybe has provided critical regional connecti uh, connectivity for many locations throughout the country, with no other viable option than flying. Whilst we listen to no end of the rhetoric on the importance of regional connectivity, Yet again, the government has allowed a service of critical ec economic importance to fail. Any kind of positive or proactive approach has been completely lacking. The government must, must now answer how those vital regional links will be maintained following Flybe's collapse. And finally, the sector has asked the government to review the 80-20 rule that if they don't uh, uh, use the slots, they lose them. Uh, this forces airlines to continue with flights that are half empty or worse. So will the Minister address the industry's concerns uh, 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 and address this matter urgently, um, whilst, you know, uh, and actually break the radio silence that has been happening for many, many months on the issue of regional connectivity? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, um, I absolutely agree with the honourable gentleman in regards to the sadness expressed uh, by himself for the loss of the jobs for people working for Flybe. It is a sad day when any organisation collapses in this way and for the individuals and the communities that it affects. So I personally am um, extremely committed to making sure that uh, as a government we are working with colleagues to make sure those individuals, those staff members are given the right uh, uh, advice and support that they require and just to pick up particularly on staff um, we are very lucky we've been engaging with the industry who are pulling together and there are some airlines who have said that they are going to prioritize um, uh, staff from Flybe into their recruitment uh, process so I think that's good and I'm hoping to see uh, movement on that as time moves on um, so, in regards to the next steps, in regards to the passengers, obviously, absolutely everybody is quite concerned about individuals travelling and how they will get back and, and move around the country. I would like to just reiterate that the majority of Flybe passengers um, are travelling domestically. Um, obviously, we are working with those airlines, as I outlined already, in regards to fares and making sure that capacity is there, also making sure that they can travel on, on the rail and of course those conversations will continue. Um, I am having a meeting later on today, Mr Speaker, so if any MP would like to ask specific questions or an update on where we are with that information, I would very much be grateful if they could attend. However, whilst I have great respect for um, the Honourable Gentleman, um, because we've had many uh, debates and discussions on a number of things over the years, um, I I disagree with his statement that we have sat on our hands. I, uh, we, as a government, have been uh, absolutely working hard and been determined to make so sure... So Kelly Tolhurst, MP for the government, uh, saying that levelling up connectivity is a top priority for this government, but she added... Unfortunately, in a competitive market, companies do fail and it is not the government's job to prop them up. Uh, she spoke about solutions for passengers who are 
currently trying to get to other places who had been booked on uh, Fly B flights as well, uh, talking about rescue fares being offered by other airlines, uh, bus and rail companies also offering travel for passengers affected and indeed uh, staff of Fly B affected. A responding for Labour, Carl Turner um, said uh, the government must provide Fly B uh, staff with all necessary support. He was asking what assessment has been made of the risk to other airlines. He said there was no end to the rhetoric uh, from the government on connectivity, but he said it has allowed this service to fail. Well, uh, when Kelly Tolhurst got up to speak, I was uh, in the middle of speaking to the CEO of the Ports of Jersey, Matt Thomas, at Jersey Airport, and he's uh, still with us now. Thank you for your patience. You were describing for us the the connections, of course, between Fly B, B and, Fly B and uh, Jersey. It was originally known as Jersey European Airways. Um, you were also describing how uh, you have a number of other carriers who operate in and out of Jersey. What did you make of, of that statement from the government? Do you think they could have done more? I think the challenge of how do you ensure the economic benefits of connectivity are unlocked, I think that one's one that the industry has been facing for some time. I think we need to really redouble our efforts on, you know, there's a disconnect and there's, you can understand why airlines gravitate to big conurbations and big cities, but we can't miss out on the economic connectivity. And you take an island like Jersey, um, it really is strategic connectivity that we're talking about and our ability to uh, connect with the mainland. Do, do you think other airlines are at risk and under particular stress at the moment because of coronavirus? Could that be the, the straw that breaks the camel's back for other airlines as it has done with Fly B? Uh, I don't think now's the time for, um, you know, generating any additional concerns. I think the, the, the unique combination of a shock event like coronavirus, and it's very much like, events that uh, the industry's happened, has happened to the industry before, you know, the volcano, SARS, 9-11, which it rebound, rebounds from very, very quickly. Uh, I think the challenge is um, it's a hyper-competitive market. So whilst it's growing, it's very, very competitive. So the margins for some airlines are thin. And um, a sh shock event happens, it puts additional stresses, as we've seen with Fly B. Uh, I think that's not to withstand, you know, the real challenge from an airport perspective is, how do we unlock that regional connectivity? OK, um, thank you very much for your thoughts on this story today. Matt Thomas, the CEO of the Ports of Jersey, joining us uh, from Jersey Airport. Well, I'm joined now by uh, Brian Strutton, who's at Heathrow. He's the General Secretary of the British Airline Pilots Association, or BALPA, which represents around 10,000 British pilots. Uh, thank you very much for joining us on Newsroom Live as well. Uh, you, from your perspective, you feel that Fly B has been doubly let down, don't you? Yes, well, I just heard the minister in the clip you played say that um, government hasn't been sitting on its hands, but I think government has washed its hands of Flybe. Uh, it was in January that uh, government ministers, very senior cabinet ministers, uh, promised that it would help Flybe, it would help with a commercial loan arrangement, help with a relaxation on the special tax that airlines pay the air passenger duty. Uh, none of that has materialised. Uh, government is now trying to blame everybody else but itself. Um, the staff today are devastated. Uh, they found out overnight, um, often on, on, on media channels, that they've lost their jobs. Uh, they feel completely left, out, left let down because government told them that they would be rescued. What did you make of that specific statement from the minister then saying, unfortunately, in a competitive market, companies do fail and it is not the government's job to prop them up? Well, then why did it say it was its job in January? Um, this is the amazing thing. Government's done a complete U-turn on Flybe. If you look back at the announcements that were made by the Secretary of State for Transport, Secretary of State for uh, Business and the Chancellor of the Exchequer back in January, um, this was a deal that government had put together to keep Flybe flying. Um, now you're hearing completely the opposite. Oh, it's nothing to do with us. But, but um, what about its owners? The owners as well have a job to step up to. They've got to explain why they're not willing to back the company that they bought only a year ago as well. My understanding is that the owners were prepared to put in money, were prepared to back a business plan, but the bit that was promised by government is the bit that wasn't delivered. And I think we need answers about that. Uh, what's your message to airline pilots today? How many of them are affected by this collapse? 
We contacted all of our members in Flybe um, before six o'clock this morning. Uh, there are 600 pilots in Flybe. Um, we gave them the information that they haven't been given either by Flybe or the administrators, telling them what their rights are, what their opportunities are, uh, what we can do for them. Um, we will be helping them to retrain for other jobs in aviation if we can. Uh, the type of aircraft they fly in Flybe doesn't mean they necessarily have transferable skills. Um, so we'll be helping them find alternative employment, but it's going to be very difficult because all airlines are going to be going through a hard time this summer. OK, Brian, thank you very much for your time today. Brian Strutton, uh, General Secretary of the British Airline Pilots Association, BALPA. And later this morning, we'll be answering your questions on the Flybe collapse. You can send those to us by tweeting the hashtag uh, BBC Your Questions or email yourquestions at bbc.co.uk. That's coming up at half past 12 here on BBC News. Hello there. So as you've been hearing, Flybe is telling customers not to travel to the airport unless they've arranged an alternative flight. The Exeter-based airline went to administration last night after narrowly avoiding going bust back in January. Well, in a letter to the airline staff, the chief executive, Mark Anderson, said that despite every effort, we now have no alternative, having failed to find a feasible solution to allow us to keep trading. I'm very sorry that we have not been able to secure the funded needed to continue to deliver our turnaround. Well, earlier we spoke to Matt Roach. He's the boss of Exeter Airport. And we asked him what impact last night's announcement will have on regional connectivity. Uh, I think the onus on us now is working with airline partners, uh, local stakeholders and the government um, to, to try to make sure that we fill that regional connectivity gap that's um, been caused by, by this sad news. Uh, I think the government is, is clear that regional connectivity is a key strategy going forward. Uh, and we'll be working with them closely now to try to, uh, to close the gap that we've now got. I think all regional airports that have been affected have you know, got similar challenges in terms of route network and, and connectivity. You're right where Exeter sits. The airport is key for connectivity into the southwest, and that's why it's important that uh, local stakeholders and national government are all joined up to try to make sure that that regional connectivity gap is filled. Well, in the last hour, the Transport Minister, Kelly Tolhurst, said that other airlines are ready to help passengers. Unfortunately, in a competitive market, companies do fail, and it is not the role of government to prop them up. Given the time of the year, the nature of Flybe's business and fleet, and the routes it flies, sufficient alternative transport arrangements should be available, either with other airlines or by road and rail. The number of passengers abroad is small, and it is further reduced as a result of coronavirus. For those passengers who are abroad, there is sufficient capacity on commercial airlines to return to the UK. The Civil Aviation Authority and the Secretary of State are encouraging these airlines to offer, res to offer rescue fares, and this is already happening. Kelly Tolhurst. Well, so far today here on BBC News, we've already heard from Southampton, uh, Birmingham, Exeter and Jersey airports. Let's go now to Belfast City Airport. Our correspondent Keith Doyle is there. Um, Keith, tell us how big a part Flybe has played at Belfast City Airport and who will replace the company? Yes, well, good afternoon from uh, George Best, Belfast City Airport. You can see the Fly BE desks behind me would usually be busy this time of day. Indeed, they're busy pretty much all day. There's 14 routes that fly from Belfast City Airport to uh, right across the UK, from Inverness to Southampton and a dozen places in between. And of course, uh, the, the loss of Fly BE from uh, Belfast City Airport is, is particularly unique for Northern Ireland because of a unique particular situation, both geographically being part of an island and of course politically. Now the Economy Minister uh, Diane Dodd said maintaining air connectivity is absolutely vital for Northern Ireland. Indeed that, that's really been the essence right across the board here. Sinn Féin has said this is devastating uh, for the economy and businesses in Northern Ireland and business groups have said well this is also a huge loss for, for commuters. There's uh, many thousands of commuters uh, fly in and out of, of Belfast and, and Northern Ireland uh, every week. Uh, also for students there's 17,000 
thousand Northern Ireland students spread right across the UK. In some places, uh, Flybe is is the only connection they can possibly have. So really, right across the board, they're all saying that this is hugely damaging uh, for uh, the economy and the, the people of Northern Ireland, where really there are uh, very few other viable options. Now, the chief executive of Belfast City Airport, Brian Ambrose, has said that this has been uh, a challenging time, but he said that there has been interest in the 14 routes here. He said that they're all profitable, that they're all strong, and other airlines have already expressed interest in taking them over. And he says that he is optimistic and confident that within weeks, even days, that there will be uh, uh, other airlines taking up uh, the slack here and, and moving into some of those routes. Indeed, there's some speculation there might even be an announcement on that uh, later on today. But of course, that's no consolation for the uh, hundreds of passengers who would be uh, queuing up here throughout the day. Uh, these desks will remain closed today and uh, passengers have, who are booked onto Fly BE have been told really not to turn up to the airport here. Okay, Keith, thank you very much. Keith Doyle there at Belfast City Airport. And we're going to be answering your questions on the Flybe collapse at around 12.30 here on BBC News. So coming up in the next few minutes, if you want to try and squeeze in a question, you can do that by tweeting uh, using the hashtag BBC Your Questions or email your questions at bbc.co.uk. That's coming up in the next few minutes. Hello, this is BBC Newsroom Live with me, Anita McVeigh. The headlines. Fly B passengers are told do not travel to the airport as Europe's largest regional airline goes into administration. Just not sure what we're going to do now. And when, did, when did you first hear? Um, early hours of the morning. It's quite, quite a shock. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that we'd be saved, but not this time. With 2,000 jobs at risk, the government says it's ready to help employees, but blamed a weak company and the coronavirus for the collapse. We really tried to do everything that we possibly could back at the turn of the year. And uh, unfortunately, though, with the situation that's developed with the corona, an already weak company, I'm afraid, just hasn't been able to survive. Now on Newsroom Live, it's time to get some of your questions answered on the collapse of regional airline Fly B. Joining me in the studio is editor-in-chief of the travel magazine Wanderlust, Lynn Hughes, and in Belfast, the business editor of the Irish News, Gary McDonald. Gary and Lynn, thank you both very much for joining us today. Um, we're going to begin with a question for you, Lynn. This is from Gabriel uh, Celso in Southampton who asks, I have a flight next week, which was booked yesterday. What can I do? I guess this question is going to cover, uh, well, a, what a lot of people want to know who have flights booked with the airline. Mm. Oh, well, what bad luck, when particularly having booked it just yesterday. Um, oh, dear, Gabriel. Well, you know, obviously the bad news is it's not going to happen. I mean, there's a small chance um, if Gabriel booked with a partner airline because... Um, Flybe did do a lot of code sharing with other airlines. If by any chance Gabriel was booked with a partner airline, that flight might still be happening. However, there's a very strong chance, obviously, that it was just with Flybe, in which case all he or she can do is book with another airline and try to get the money back. Now, if they booked through a travel agent, the first thing to do is to contact the travel agent and um, they will hopefully be able to handle all of that and, you know, rebook them or whatever. If they book direct, though, then it's a different story. So it's going to be, how did they book? Did they book through a credit card? If so, they need to contact the credit card company, hopefully get the money back. Um, if it's through a debit card, they should hopefully be able to get it back um, under the chargeback scheme where, you know, you haven't had your goods, so you can hopefully get it back. But that is really, unless they book through a travel agent, then all they've got to do is book with another airline, find another way to do it, and meanwhile try and get their money back. Okay, um, Gary, let's go to you. This is a question from uh, Vicky Swindles in Kidderminster, who asks, will the flights that Flybe ran now be run by other airline companies? And, and we were just in Belfast City Airport a few minutes ago. We've been at various airports affected by this around the UK so far today. And yes, lots of questions in all of those about who, if anyone, might step in. 
Well, yes, there is still an outside chance that some other airline might step in. Um, if you look from a Belfast perspective, and Belfast would probably be, from all the, the flyby um, stations around the UK, Belfast would probably be, well, it is the second most exposed. 80% of all the flights out of Belfast City Airport are flyby flights, Southampton's 95%. But uh, there are 14 routes from Belfast, and uh, the city airport uh, management would have, have been telling me this morning that all 14 of those routes are profitable. So this potentially is something that, that uh, an incoming airline could look at. There are some problems uh, in that flyby generally fly the smaller type of aircraft, the twin prop um, aircraft. If, um, for argument's sake, a, a flyby or an IAG, a British Airways owner, were to come in, they tend to use bigger flights. There's an, also a slight problem at Belfast City Airport in that the runway is slightly shorter than, certainly shorter than Belfast International Airport, so it restricts the type of planes that can go as well. But as I think that's the case around other airports in the UK as well. There would be that question in some of them about whether the, the runways would be long enough to accommodate larger aircraft. Absolutely, and that is the case. And in fact, we saw a number of years ago when Ryanair did fly out of Belfast City Airport, they did. There was a proposal at a time for to extend the Belfast City Airport runway, which was subsequently um, it was uh, it was knocked back by the planners. So if Ryanair, in that instance, uh, withdrew their services from Belfast City Airport. But there, there's still a chance, and the City Airport in Belfast would be quite confident that something could happen now. Whether that happens today, next week, next month. In the short term, it's, it's problematic for those who are booked to fly, but um, it's not a complete loss cause. Mm, so, yes, and, and, and with other airports around the UK affect, affected by Fly B, there may not be an immediate solution. Um, a question that's linked to that now, Lynn, from uh, Dean Robinson, who sent us this via email. Will another airline step in to honour existing Fly B bookings? Well, what is happening is that various airlines are being asked, can they offer a rescue fare? Ryanair has jumped in straight away offering rescue fares. And so these are not free fares. These are perhaps good value, cheaper fares. EasyJet as well, I believe. And, is doing okay, EasyJet yes. does have. So I think as the day goes on, and of course, you know, the situation is changing hour by hour at the moment. But as the day goes on, I think we'll see more airlines offering rescue fares on the routes. And the government has also appealed to the rail companies and so on to see if they can offer um, cheaper fares or rescue fares, um, certainly for the British mainland. So, um, you Clearly, know, if you were space. hoping to travel further afield or indeed were hoping to travel back from mm. further afield, it becomes more complicated. It does. It does. But there is a relatively small number of people actually overseas, fortunately, at the time. That's partly the time of year. Um, it's partly because of coronavirus. Um, and so the majority of people affected are actually in the British Isles. OK, um, Gary, Robin has emailed us to ask, are other flights which are operated by Flybe, be, uh, such as Virgin, also cancelled? Well, all Flybe, all Fly be flights obviously will be cancelled because the company is in administration. As regards Virgin, um, Virgin flights will, will continue to fly as normal unless there's a direct link. Virgin have an ownership into Flybe. You may remember um, at the tail end of last year when Flybe first indicated that it was in trouble, um, there was a syndicate involving Virgin, um, involving the Stobart Group, who are probably best known for their, their haulage lorries that you would see hurtling up and down the motorways. And uh, an American hedge fund um, did buy over Flybe, which, which offered them some solace. But Virgin is a separately run company, and at this stage I have no indication that any Virgin flights will be cancelled. Flybe flights, absolutely. You won't fly anywhere with Flybe. Virgin, you should be okay. OK, um, now from uh, David Rosethorne in Swanage, Lynn, who asks, is the coronavirus having such a big impact on dom domestic air travel? Are rail companies also being hit to the same extent? Ooh, good question. Um, as far as flights go, I think the more cynical would say that actually Flybe was in so much you know, difficulties anyway, that actually, you know, this might be a handy thing to blame. But yes, airlines are definitely being affected by coronavirus already, and that situation could get worse over the coming weeks. Um, there's talk that there may be even other failures around the world. You know, we're not just talking about the UK here. 
Um, as far as rail travel, in the UK, there's no indications yet that rail travel has been impacted. Now, obviously, as, as the virus goes on, it may be that people won't be, want to be in a public space. I mean, and there's talk, obviously, of offices potentially closing down and people work from home. That might have an effect. But actually, every indicator seems to be that um, people at the moment still travelling by rail. And in fact, more people probably choosing to spend Easter in the UK rather than travel overseas. It's a, really a very fluid situation as people wait to see exactly what happens with the spread of the virus, isn't it? Yes. Um, Gary, let's get back to costs involved here. Bethany Graves in Aberdeen is asking, if we used a debit card to book, do we get our money back? It's probably a bit more difficult with a debit card than, say, a credit card, for instance. If you have booked through a credit, well, via a credit card, you are most likely to get your money back. A debit card is slightly different. Um, if the flight you booked was over £100, um, you probably have the same rights as if you booked it by credit card. If, however, um, it, it costs less than £100, it becomes a bit more difficult uh, under the, the rules around debit cards. Someone this morning said the, be the best advice really is to speak to your bank. Um, but uh, if you book your flights, and those flights, if you booked it, for instance, two or three flights for a family or, or forever, likelihood is that that was over £100. You are probably um, likely to get that money back on a debit card. If and you what, booked a, uh, what about a voucher as well? We have another question from Sheila Scott Wright who asks, I have a Flybe voucher after a refund. How do I stand for getting my money back? Unfortunately, with that, um, we have uh, we have seen in the past when 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 big stores, big retail outlets collapse, that the vouchers therefore become it's almost a lost cause. I'm not quite sure the the fly v, the fly B vouchers how they operate. Again, if you have booked and you've um, and you have this um, a voucher is almost cash, and um, if you have a cash voucher and I just spent in fly B, there's nowhere to spend it. So I imagine if you have a voucher uh, that you have claimed a refund through a voucher. I imagine that, uh, unfortunately, that will be something that you will just have to take on the chin, that you may not get, um, get a refund on that voucher. OK, well, we await more information, of course, on all of this. But uh, thanks so much to both of you, uh, to Lynn here in the studio, Lynn Hughes from the uh, Wanderlust Travel Magazine, and also to Gary MacDonald uh, from the Irish News, the business editor there. Thank you both very much for answering our viewers' questions, and thank you uh, to you for sending them in. Now, the collapse of the regional airline FlyB has left thousands of passengers hoping to fly from UK airports stranded. Customers hoping to travel have been told not to go to the airport unless they've arranged an alternative flight. The airline went into administration last night after a fresh bid for financial support failed. It puts the jobs of 2,000 staff at risk and could have major consequences for some regional airports where the majority of flights are run by Flybe. More on the impact on specific regions in just a moment, but first, here's our correspondent Charlotte Rose. We would like to thank you for your patience and understanding of what has been a very difficult evening. Thank you and have a very safe homeward journey. This Flybe flight may have been the last to land. The airline's collapse last night means all flights are now grounded with the loss of 2,000 jobs. When did you first hear? Um, early hours of the morning. It's quite, quite a shock. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that we'd be saved, but not this time. Sorry. Outbound passengers have been warned not to come to the airport as flights won't be departing. But for some this morning, that news came too late. We can't fly from here. There's no other airlines from here that will fly to Jersey. So, you know, we've been floated options like ferries or essentially a different airport. But with Jersey, there isn't really that many options. I've booked to go to Australia via a pogo with Singapore Airlines. But unfortunately, part of the journey was 5B. <coughs> and being as I've gone into administration, my old trips have been armed. Unlike the collapse of other travel operators, Monarch and Thomas Cook, the Civil Aviation Authority is not putting on flights to bring people home. Fly B transported 8 million passengers last year on 119 routes. For those now stuck abroad, other airlines have offered to step in to help passengers return. All train companies say they'll provide free transport for Fly B ticket holders. People with future flights are being urged to contact their travel agent or debit or credit card company to check how they can claim money back. 
Flybe ran into financial trouble in February last year. At the start of this year, they asked the government for assistance. Ministers said they would help and looked at delaying payments of air passenger duty due from the firm. But now the company says the impact of coronavirus on upcoming bookings has made its future unviable. And already the blame game has begun. Unions say the government could and should have done more. I think for the government to allow uh, an airline of this significance to collapse in these circumstances is its first real test of going from campaigning to the realities of government and it's a real test of its levelling up agenda. So we're going to be asking some searching questions about why this has happened so quickly and what this means for the communities and our members directly. Travelling home. But ministers say it's down to factors beyond their control. Flybe has had a challenging year in terms of its financial performance, with a decline in bookings and increased competition. Levelling up connectivity across our regions and nations is a top priority for this government. Some regional airports say they've already had other operators express interest in taking over flyby routes. But for passengers facing chaos today, such offers will come too late. Charlotte Rose, BBC News. Well, one airport which has already been hard hit by the collapse of Flybe is Southampton, where 95% of flights were operated by the company. Duncan Kennedy has this report. For two million passengers, Southampton Airport is Flybe. Not anymore. Nine in ten flights through here were with the airline, but some passengers who hadn't heard the closure news turned up anyway. So we've got a flight out, but then when we check, the flight home is with Flybe, so we're going to go to Jersey and then be stuck there. It's a sad day again. I mean, I used to fly myself, so I was crew, and you see so many airlines come and go, and it's just a sad society. The airport employs a 1,000 people, 200 of whom are with Flybe. The mood at a staff meeting with management today was said to be raw. And this airport has another really current dilemma. On the one hand, it says it could survive if it were allowed to extend the runway, which would allow jets to take off with more passengers, so making it more economically viable. But on the other, environmental campaigners have objected to the lengthening of the runway because they say that will mean more passengers, more jets and more CO2 emissions. Flybe and its previous incarnations has been at Southampton for around 40 years. The council says the government can't simply ignore regional airports. Southampton Airport is very heavily dependent uh, on Flybe, has been for years, uh, so government may need to step in to give the airport some support to keep it going. Regional connectivity really matters. That's not often understood by London politicians. They share that view about connectivity at Belfast City Airport, where 80% of flights were with Flybe. We are an island off an island, so HS2 and such don't help us. Um, so it's vitally important that we quickly re-establish that connectivity. Back at Southampton today, the airport's anti-stress dogs switch from helping nervous passengers to easing the concerns of staff. Around a dozen took advantage of what is this most uncertain of times. Duncan Kennedy, BBC News, Southampton. In a moment, we'll hear from our correspondents in Belfast, Edinburgh and Cardiff. But first, let's cross to Katie Austin, who's at Exeter Airport. I'm at the airport in Exeter where Flybe is actually based. It provides an important link for people and businesses in the southwest to other parts of the UK and to Europe. And council leaders have called today's news a hammer blow for this area's economy. Now, most of the flights set to depart from Exeter today were Flybe flights. And when you look at the departure board, you see the impact of all those planes being grounded. A sea of red as they were all cancelled. Very, very few flights out of Exeter today at all. There haven't been many staff hanging around the airport, but we have managed to speak to some cabin crew I spoke to were very upset and said everybody, all the staff are very sad and feeling very uncertain at this time. We've also been speaking to Exeter Airport's managing director. Now, he said, yes, there have been discussions with other airlines about potentially taking over some of the many routes Flybe leaves vacant here. But it remains to be seen as to whether all of those can continue in the future without Flybe. 
Well, here at George Best Belfast City Airport, uh, the fly BE desks behind me are empty, but they are usually busy because the uh, airline has operated 14 routes out of this airport. That accounts for 80% of all the scheduled flights, uh, flying 1.6 million passengers every year. Of course, the loss of this is particularly unique for Northern Ireland. It finds itself in a unique position both geographically and politically. Well, Diane Dodds, the DUP economy minister, she said maintaining air connectivity between Northern Ireland and Great Britain is absolutely vital. And Sinn Féin, uh, they've said that this loss is devastating for businesses, for the economy, and of course for commuters. Many people commute to other parts uh, of the UK every week. And students, there are 17,000 Northern Ireland students uh, based uh, studying right across the UK, some in places that are only served by air by Fly BE. So overall, this really is hugely damaging for Northern Ireland, where viable, uh, other viable transport options are really not available. Now, the CEO of Belfast City Airport has said that the 14 routes here are all profitable and, and strong, and they expect some good news in the next uh, couple of days, or even sooner than that, for all the people that use and work here at Belfast City Airport. Well, inside the terminal building here at Edinburgh, staff from the administrators are sitting at the check-in desk giving advice to Flybe customers. And a sign of how quick and how unforgiving this process has been is that the Flybe signs on the walls behind them have already been painted over. Now, in truth, those desks have been eerily quiet this morning. The advice to passengers was to not travel to the airport. The vast majority have taken that advice. As far as why their impact is concerned, well, Scotland's Transport Secretary has described Flybe as essential to business and tourism. The airline flew from Scotland's four major airports and at Aberdeen it accounted for around a third of their business. Now hundreds of members of staff from Flybe based in Scotland are being affected by this. The Scottish Government say that they will support them. They are also looking at the Scottish carrier, Logan Air, taking over some of the routes. But there is a more immediate problem for many, many people. That is how to get to where they're going to. The Railways offers one solution. The operators of both the East Coast and West Coast main lines offering free travel for Flybe customers, provided they can show their Flybe ticket. Here at Cardiff Airport, there's real concern over what this will mean for connecting Wales to the rest of the UK and to parts of Europe. There are six regular flyby routes that have been going from here to Edinburgh, to Belfast, as well as places like Paris. Around a quarter of all the passengers who flew from Cardiff last year were on flyby flights. But the very last flyby aircraft landed here from Dublin last night. The return flight today cancelled, of course. Not too many people turning up at the airport. The attention already going now to how to get those people back in the air over the next year. There is an offer in the next week for people with boarding passes to use transport for Wales trains, but that's not going to help if you had a flight booked to get to Jersey. Now, interestingly, Cardiff Airport is owned by the Welsh Labour government, so uh, the taxpayer has a stake in this to making sure that this airport remains viable. I've been talking to the chief exec, she says conversations ongoing all the time about getting other companies in here, but that may need incentives, particularly if it involves getting bigger aircraft than the ones that Flybe operate with. So that's the view around the country. And we'll be answering your questions on the flyby collapse at half past three this afternoon and what it might mean for you, for example, if you've booked a flight. And that's here on BBC News. So do send in to us any questions by tweeting to the hashtag BBC Your Questions or you can email us your questions at bbc.co.uk. As I say, that's coming up just after half past three. Let's get more now on the collapse of Flybe. Mike Lancy is the General Secretary of Prospect, a trade union which represents around 450 of Flybe's staff. We're very grateful uh, that you've been able to join us on uh, BBC News. Uh, and I wondered what your reaction was to Flybe's closure and what the impact will be on your members. Well, it's been a, a dramatic uh, 12 hours or so. Um, last night it started to break with uh, media coverage of aircraft um, being uh, grounded and uh, impounded. And then as the story starts to unfold, you began to understand that there was uh, last-ditch talks which have failed. Um, contrast with the government's uh, confident suggestions that there was a future for Flybe uh, in mid-January is, is quite uh, dramatic. And 
Now the staff, uh, the supply chain and the broader communities are picking up the pieces and um, there are some searching questions to ask here about how this has come about. How, how do you think it has come about? I'm, I'm guessing that you think that government is partly to blame given that six weeks ago it did say it would step in to help Flybe. Well you should always use public money carefully and uh, Nationalisation is not a panacea for everything, but this government has a very strong levelling up agenda. But I think what's happened is that uh, campaigning has given way to the practical challenges of government. And it's going to be very interesting to see how the government reconciles its levelling up agenda, regional uh, stimulus, connectivity, and this airline is obviously crucial to connectivity, with maybe some of its deeper, longer-term uh, preferences for market solutions. And I hear today um, different government spokespeople talking about uh, this is a commercial decision and so on. But it was a commercial decision and a series of dramatic commercial decisions which led to us bailing out the banks. The difficulty, we I suppose, sorry to interrupt, Mr Clancy, but I suppose the difficulty is that the business was getting into financial difficulties, wasn't it? And is it really, therefore, the role the role of government to bail out failing businesses? Not as a, a precursor on all occasions, but when this business is providing a public service obligation uh, route service, when it provides connectivity, when it impacts airports uh, significantly, then this is a different set of considerations. And as I was about to say, the government has stepped in at different times. You know, economic purism is fine until it, then it crashes up against the reality of communities being damaged by its consequences. Now, we think the government could have done more, but what it needs to do now is to be proactive actually demonstrate the substance to that levelling agenda and it needs to do more to help these people find jobs. Often these people have got quite strong technical backgrounds but the airline industry is going through challenges anyway and it won't be easy for other airlines just to absorb the routes and ensure that there is the connectivity. And one of the challenges of course that the airline industry is facing is the impact of coronavirus. I just wondered what you were hearing about the impact on other airlines. Well, we have uh, business uh, contacts uh, across both the industry and, and more generally. And people are telling us that there's already depressed passenger numbers. Clearly, people are making choices about future uh, uh, tourism uh, destinations. And that means the airlines are under pressure. I think what this is actually is a first test of the government's um, ability to respond to the economic impact of the coronavirus. And actually, this may not be the last time we're having to have a conversation. I just hope we don't stack up a series of business challenges and failures before government realises it actually has to be proactive and act to support business in these circumstances. Mike Clancy, we must leave it there. But uh, Mike Clancy, General Secretary of Prospect, thanks for your time. Customers hoping to travel have been told not to go to the airport unless they've arranged an alternative flight. The airline went into administration last night after a fresh bid for financial support failed. It puts the jobs of 2,000 staff at risk and could have major consequences for some regional airports where the majority of flights are run by Flybe. More on the impact on specific regions in a moment, but first, here's our correspondent Charlotte Rose. We would like to thank you for your patience and understanding of what has been a very difficult evening. Thank you and have a very safe over journey. This Flybe flight may have been the last to land. The airline's collapse last night means all flights are now grounded, with the loss of 2,000 jobs. When did you first hear? Um, early hours of the morning. It's quite a shock. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that we'd be saved, but not this time. Sorry. Outbound passengers have been warned not to come to the airport as flights won't be departing. But for some this morning, that news came too late. We can't fly from here. There's no other airlines from here that will fly to Jersey. So, you know, we've floated options like ferries or essentially a different airport. But with Jersey, there isn't really that many options. I've booked to go to Australia via a pogo with Singapore Airlines. But unfortunately, part of the journey was with 5B. <coughs> And being as I've gone into administration, my old trips have been armed. Unlike the collapse of other travel operators, Monarch and Thomas Cook, the Civil Aviation Authority is not putting on flights to bring people home. Flybe transported 8 million passengers last year on 119 routes. For those now stuck abroad, other airlines have offered to step in to help passengers return. All train companies say they'll provide free transport for Flybe ticket holders. 
People with future flights are being urged to contact their travel agent or debit or credit card company to check how they can claim money back. Flybe ran into financial trouble in February last year. At the start of this year, they asked the government for assistance. Ministers said they would help and looked at delaying payments of air passenger duty due from the firm. But now the company says the impact of coronavirus on upcoming bookings has made its future unviable. And already the blame game has begun. Unions say the government could and should have done more. I think for the government to allow uh, an airline of this significance to collapse in these circumstances is its first real test of going from campaigning to the realities of government and it's a real test of its levelling up agenda. So we're going to be asking some searching questions about why this has happened so quickly and what this means for the communities and our members directly. Travelling home. But ministers say it's down to factors beyond their control. Flybe has had a challenging year in terms of its financial performance, with a decline in bookings and increased competition. Levelling up connectivity across our regions and nations is a top priority for this government. Some regional airports say they've already had other operators express interest in taking over flyby routes. But for passengers facing chaos today, such offers will come too late. Charlotte Rose, BBC News. Well, one airport which has already been hard hit by the collapse of Flybe is Southampton, where 95% of flights were operated by the company. Duncan Kennedy reports. For two million passengers, Southampton Airport is Flybe. Not anymore. Nine in ten flights through here were with the airline, but some passengers who hadn't heard the closure news turned up anyway. So we've got a flight out, but then when we check, the flight home is with Flybe, so we're going to go to Jersey and then be stuck there. It's a sad day again. I mean, I used to fly myself, so I was crew, and you see so many airlines come and go, and it's just a sad society. The airport employs a 1,000 people, 200 of whom are with Flybe. The mood at a staff meeting with management today was said to be raw. And this airport has another really current dilemma. On the one hand, it says it could survive if it were allowed to extend the runway, which would allow jets to take off with more passengers, so making it more economically viable. But on the other, environmental campaigners have objected to the lengthening of the runway because they say that'll mean more passengers, more jets and more CO2 emissions. Flybe in its previous incarnations has been at Southampton for around 40 years. The council says the government can't simply ignore regional airports. Southampton Airport is very heavily dependent uh, on Flybe, has been for years, uh, so government may need to step in to give the airport some support to keep it going. Regional connectivity really matters. That's not often understood by London politicians. They share that view about connectivity at Belfast City Airport, where 80% of flights were with Flybe. We are an island off an island, so HS2 and such don't help us. Um, so it's vitally important that we quickly re-establish that connectivity. Back at Southampton today, the airport's anti-stress dogs switch from helping nervous passengers to easing the concerns of staff. Around a dozen took advantage and what is this most uncertain of times? Duncan Kennedy, BBC News, Southampton. Let's speak now to Jonathan Hinkles in Glasgow Airport. He's the CEO of Logan Air, which I understand, uh, Mr Hinkles, is by volume the fourth largest airline in the UK. Uh, thanks for joining us here on BBC News. I wanted to ask you first about uh, your reaction to the news of the collapse of Flybe. Look, it's a tremendously sad day for the aviation industry and particularly for the 2,000 staff members in Flybe. Um, our hearts really do go out to them. It's a position that nobody would wish to wake up and find themselves in. Um, we've already uh, launched a uh, recruitment campaign for probably around 100 uh, additional pilots, engineers and cabin crew uh, to join Logan Air uh, and we're hopeful that that in some way will support uh, a number of those people but uh, I think the over overwhelming uh, sadness today uh, has to be for them and what it means for them and their families. What's gone wrong? 
Well, I think a difficult situation was probably made impossible by the onset of coronavirus in recent weeks. We've seen bookings uh, drop by around 10 to 15 percent within our own network, and we're taking action around that uh, in terms of reducing flights on certain routes. Um, but I think if uh, your underlying business uh, is already facing challenges before something like that comes along, uh, then, uh, as I say, it makes it impossible uh, to uh, navigate one's way uh, out of that situation. But from Logan Air's perspective, um, we've um, seen that there's an opportunity there to maintain UK regional connectivity uh, by announcing 16 routes formerly phoned by Flybe today. We've done that today. Those routes are already on sale and some Flybe customers are already rebooking with us uh, even in the hour or so since those routes went on sale. And I'm sure those Flybe customers will be delighted uh, with that news. But Flybe uh, flew 8 million people a year, didn't it? And a flight, I think, took off every two minutes and, and landed uh, similarly. So uh, although clearly what you've done is a help, it, it, it's a drop in the ocean, isn't it, really? Well, in terms of regional UK connectivity, that's where we focused our response today. So routes like Aberdeen to Manchester, Aberdeen to Birmingham, Glasgow to Southampton, Edinburgh to Exeter, those kind of routes that you're talking about in the report uh, a few moments ago are the ones where we're focusing today. A lot of Flybe's routes, for example, went into airports like London City, London Heathrow, uh, into the continent, Amsterdam, Dusseldorf, places like that. They aren't part of what Logan Air is going to be picking up as a response. It's about keeping the UK moving uh, and responding well with the connectivity that the UK needs. And that's really where our focus is. Keeping the UK moving in the air is interesting, isn't it? Because it does make me wonder if, if aviation growth is actually compatible with meeting our environmental targets. There's a, a problem there, isn't there? Well, the whole aviation industry has got a job to do, but actually the whole um, transport economy has got a job to do. If you look, for example, at the vast majority of routes that Logan Air flies within the Highlands and Islands of Scotland, aviation is actually the least uh, carbon damaging method of transport. The carbon emissions from a flight, for example, between Edinburgh and the Orkney Islands around not well, the whole aviation industry has got a job to do, but actually the whole um, transport economy has got a job to do around its environmental performance. Um, we've already done a lot of work in islands of Scotland. Aviation is actually the least uh, carbon damaging method of transport. The carbon emissions from a flight, for example, between Edinburgh and the Orkney Islands are around nine times lower than driving to Aberdeen and taking your car on the ferry. So the whole transport sector, not just aviation, has got a job to do around its environmental performance. Um, we've already done a lot of work on that. We've more yet to come. And the four additional aircraft that we're bringing into our fleet uh, to uh, help us to take over those routes uh, that Logan Air has announced from Flybe today will all be the most environmentally efficient aircraft that you can get on the market. Jonathan Hinkles, Chief Executive at Logan Air. Uh, thanks for joining us from Glasgow. Thank you. The Scottish airline Logan Air has said it's taking on 16 routes from its collapsed rival Flybe in the next few months. It says there'll be nearly 400 extra flights each week from Aberdeen, Glasgow, Edinburgh, Inverness and Newcastle. Flybe went into administration overnight, putting 2,000 jobs at risk. I'm joined now by Brian Strutton, who is in Heathrow, and he's the General Secretary of the British Airline Pilots Association, or BALPA, which represents around 10,000 British pilots. Uh, we're grateful for your time, uh, Mr Stratton. Uh, I wondered, first of all, what your reaction was to the news of Flybe's collapse and what the impact on pilots will be. Well, we were absolutely uh, devastated to hear the news overnight that uh, Flybe had gone into administration. Um, we had serious thoughts for our our members and all the staff in Flybe who heard the news probably via the media first thing this morning. All they had was an email from the administrators, Ernst & Young, telling them they were redundant with no other information at all. Um, we're picking up the pieces from that. Uh, we're in touch with uh, all of the pilots in Flybe, telling them what their rights are and what things that they can do because there's very little else there to support them. Did, did the, your members see this coming? Because it seems a big change, doesn't it, that only six weeks ago the government was promising a rescue package? Yes, there's a couple of things really. I mean, Fly Flybe's had a chequered history. A year ago it was bought out by a consortium of Virgin and Stobart and Cyrus Private Equity. 
Um, then in January there was a crisis of confidence, but then government stepped in and said, we're going to bail you out. And the Chancellor Exchequer, the Secretary of State for Business and for Transport, all came out saying, uh, you know, Flybe is fine, we're going to put a, a package together, a deal together for them. Um, that didn't materialise. Government seems to have done a U-turn on that commitment and has walked away from the Flybe uh, airline and, and the workforce, and that's why it went into, uh, into administration. It's a terrible, terrible shame. Of course, I suppose some might say it isn't really the role of government to bail out failing businesses, but we haven't got very much t uh, time. I do just want to ask you, in terms of the coronavirus, which is being described as the straw that broke the camel's back with Flybe, uh, in terms of the wider industry, what are you hearing about the impact on other airlines and the potential impact that could have on your members? Well, first of all, the worldwide impact of the coronavirus on the avi aviation industry is estimated to be a loss of around £90 billion um, this year, a huge impact on world aviation. That will flow through into the UK. UK airlines are reacting quickly. They're reacting in one way. They're seeing a loss of, of bookings for travel in the summer, so they're trying to shore that up by offering special discounts and making it easier for customers to uh, switch bookings to give them more confidence to book. But they're also trying to cut their costs. So they've approached their pilots and said they're going to have pay freezes, recruitment freezes, being asked to work part time and being asked to take unpaid leave. So some pretty draconian cost cutting measures that uh, the UK airlines are carrying out. Brian Strutton from Belper. We must leave it there. Really good to talk to you. Thanks. Well, now on Newsroom Live, it's time to get some of your questions answered on the collapse of the regional airline Flybe. Joining us in the studio to answer them is Victoria Bacon from ABTA, the Travel Association. And in East London is Rory Boland, the travel editor of Which. And uh, thank you both very much uh, for being with us to answer questions. And Victoria, I'm going to start with you, if I may. And a question from Gabriel in Southampton, who says... I have a flight next week booked yesterday. What can I do? So it will depend a little bit on how you've booked your flight. Um, so basically, if the first thing I would say is if you booked with a travel agent, go to that travel agent to find out whether or not they have got travel insurance um, or flight, flight failure insurance in place. Alternatively, the other option is if you're um, if you booked on a credit card and certainly if the, the, the cost of the flight is over £100, then you should be able to claim back on your credit card How as well. How do you well. do that, by the way? Um, there are various ways you can do it. You literally ring up your credit card company and right. you can find that out on, on the ABTA website. We have details as well about how you can claim through through your credit card provider. It's basically through filling in a quite a simple form. So, yeah. so really to answer Gabriel's question, it depends how you paid for yeah, it. Yeah, it, it, it depends. If you book through a travel agent, they may well have uh, uh, insurance in place to support you. If, they, if you haven't booked through a travel agent, if you book directly with Flybe, then you'll have to pursue that claim through your credit card. If, if the cost is below £100, then... Then, you, then your rights, I'm afraid, aren't as, as strong in that sense. So you may or may not be able to pursue a claim through your debit or credit card um, supplier. OK. Uh, Rory, a question now uh, from Carol in Derbyshire. She says, I have flights booked from Manchester to Newquay. Now, they're in June. Uh, how can I claim a refund? So an extension, really, of Gabriel's question. similar as well it, it will depend how those tickets were booked and um, so the same advice oh Rory, and then look at your credit card provider or debit card. Mm. you're freezing up rory we might um, give you a moment just to try and re-establish the line there in the meantime i'm going to go back to victoria because dean is asking if another airline will step in uh, to honour existing Flybe bookings. Now, we know that one airline, don't we, has stepped in and said it's going to operate 16 uh, routes. Yes, yeah, that, that's right. Logan Air is, is, is stepping yeah. in to, to operate those routes. Unfortunately, what that doesn't mean is that they will be picking up those bookings. Unfortunately, those bookings obviously have been paid to Flybe. So um, what it does mean in the future is that you will be, if you're able to make a claim back, for example, on your credit card, then you'll be able to rebook 
with that company. The other thing I would mention is if I, it's worth checking as well if you're flying on a route that, that EasyJet have offered um, what they've called rescue fees as well, which is um, fares for £65 if you can give evidence of your fly B booking, then they said that they will um, offer you a, fl- a return flight as well. But that will very much depend on whether or not EasyJet um, cover those routes. And obviously they won't cover many of the domestic routes. That right. Fly OK. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Um, Neil is asking, uh, he had a flight delay claim with Flybe since May last year. Uh, so obviously his flight was delayed. He'd made a claim. Um, he asks if there's any chance of getting a settlement. That doesn't sound terribly No, I'm hopeful, sorry to say, it? yeah, I mean, Flybe have obviously gone into administration. They are under um, the, or being looked after by the administrators. But I think it's very unlikely, unfortunately, that, that, that he'll be able to get any money back in that situation. Um, I don't know if you will uh, know the answers to these questions, Victoria, but I'm going to ask you. Stuart from Stratford-upon-Avon has said, I booked with Flybe B to go from Birmingham to Jersey. The same flights are now offered by Virgin Atlantic and, quotes, operated by Flybe. What does this mean? Does, is that similar to what you were just explaining um, about it means, EasyJet? Uh, well, Fly, no, Flybe operated or had quite a lot of code, what we call code share arrangements in place with other airlines. So the key thing is really who he booked his flight with in the first place. If he booked his flight with Fly B, then he'll have to make a claim for a refund with his credit card holder or his, as I say, his travel agent. Yes. If he booked that flight through Virgin Atlantic or indeed any other airline, go to that airline initially um, and have a conversation with that airline. So it's not entirely clear from Stuart's email, I think, who he had the original booking with. But I start if, if it's not with Fly B, I would start with whatever that company or airline is as for the initial conversation. OK, that's um, useful advice, yeah. Victoria. Rory Boland, I don't know if um, we've managed to re-establish the line to you, but Victoria was just uh, talking about these so-called code share partners. And we have actually got a question from Rory, uh, from Peter, I beg your pardon, who says, I have booked Fly B flights through the code share partner Air France. Will they issue the refund? Yes, so this is good news if you booked through a code share and in that that takes you your destination. So if you book through Air France, it still needs to get you where you OK, Rory, I think we are going to have to leave it there. Uh, but I think uh, we've had most of those questions answered. Rory Boland uh, and Victoria Bacon, thank you both very much. Thanks. Today at five, UK airline Flybe goes into administration, putting 2,000 jobs at risk and leaving thousands of passengers stranded. Hello, good afternoon. Well, we can speak now to Taylor Foster, who's due to start a new job with Flybe as a member of the cabin crew in just a few days' time. Um, Taylor, you knew nothing about the collapse, and in fact, you were told to ignore the warnings on the news, weren't you? Yeah, on Tuesday, I spoke to somebody from Flybe who told me to ignore the warnings. Everything was fine and how bright the future was looking and how they were congratulating me for starting on Tuesday to start the training. And, and 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 how do you feel about what's happened? Yeah, I'm really gutted. Everybody I've spoken to, pe- um, people that currently work for Flybe, they said how lovely the airline was to work for. I was really looking forward to it. I'm really gutted that they left it until the last minute to let everybody know. I still haven't heard anything from Flybe themselves. The only way I found out was everything I've seen on the news last night and today. And you have uh, turned down other job offers because you had one with Flybe? Yeah, I've turned down other job offers because I've known about this job for about two months. So I'm now another two months um, away from looking for a new job. By the time I've applied for jobs, interviewed, it's a long time to be without work. That's a miserable state of affairs, isn't it? (laughs) Yeah, and I've also had to pay for likes of my medical um, CBR checks and things like that that have all come out of my own pocket. And I've had I'm not going to start a job and I'm out of pocket. 
Um, and I also feel for the other 24 people that are going to be on my course with me that will have turned down work, given up jobs to start with Flybe this coming Tuesday. And I'm not sure how they're going to be feeling right now. I can only assume they're very disappointed. They'll be feeling the same as you. Well, we wish you luck with your search for, for alternatives. Thank you very much. Taylor Foster there. Thank you very much. Well, we can go now to Belfast City Airport and speak to the chief executive, Brian Ambrose. Um, Mr. Ambrose, 77% of the routes uh, out of Belfast, in and out of Belfast, are operated by Flybe. So what's this going to do to you now? Well, it's, it's two thirds of our passenger base. Um, the, the positive news is that there's a strong demand on the routes. We're obviously an island off an island. Air transport is critical to us. So there's been a phenomenal amount of interest in the routes from airlines over the last 24 hours. We've managed today to, to announce the first two of those routes have been backfilled by Logan Air. Um, so we're trying to uh, sympathise with the Flybe staff and our customers who have been affected but to deliver a message to them that we're confident that we can backfill those routes and we'll be hoping to make further announcements uh, in the coming days. But it's been a very difficult uh, 48 hours uh, for everyone concerned. So you've got a couple of those routes covered already by uh, Scottish Air airline Logan Air. Is that because you were already talking to other operators? So we were aware of Flybe's difficulties a year ago so the policy we adopted was to support our number one customer. We have worked with Flybe throughout the year, but it was prudent to look at a contingency plan. And as their difficulties increased, um, we have been keeping in touch with other airlines. It was unlikely they would start routes in competition with Flybe, but now that they have gone into administration, the airlines have been in touch with us, keen to start their routes as soon as possible. Customers who fly in and out of Belfast frequently and who have in the past relied on Flybe, how confident can you be that you will be able to restore the same sort of service to them? Well, we're like any business, if there's a demand for your product, then you've got a future. So we, we are five minutes from the city centre. We have an excellent facility. A lot of our customers actually travel in and out of the airport every week. So that's what we're taking to the airlines. Uh, we, we're, the routes performed well for Flybe out of this base, um, and that's why we're confident of uh, backfilling. Uh, I think, obviously, if the government can do anything to help, there's a budget on the 11th of March, and a reduction in air passenger duty is something that will be beneficial to the entire industry. Um, but we're confident, uh, without being arrogant, we have a lot of hard work to do and uh, everyone's working round the clock to try and uh, re-establish these routes as soon as possible. Do you think the government should have stepped in to help Flybe? Well, our, our only position with the government has been to do with air passenger duty. Uh, our role was to work with the airline, to give them support, uh, to work with the staff. Um, so I, it's not for me to comment on the discussions that the airline had with the government. Um, I think in our part, uh, we have been investing in the business, we have a very supportive owner um, and that's why we believe that we have a, a strong and a bright future and really the first airline today to announce routes also announced that they'd be uh, interested to hear from Flybe staff have been made redundant so that would be a real bonus if some of the people who have worked with us sometimes for a number of decades might come back here very shortly, maybe wearing a different uniform but, but back as part of the team and that's what we look forward to. OK, we're going to have to leave it there. Uh, thank you so much. Brian Ambrose, Chief Executive of Belfast City Airport, thanks so much for your time. This is Work Life from BBC News with Sally Bundock and Corin Giannone. Fall from grace, the struggling British airline Flybe collapses, leaving passengers stranded around Europe. We're live, we're in London. That's our top story today, Thursday the 4th of March. Flybe says coronavirus was the final straw. We're going to hear from one frustrated passenger. 
Also in the programme, looking at the airline industry around the world, it says growth is slowing down and the virus isn't helping at all. Our Asia business team will have the details on that. Let us know. Just use the hashtag BBC Work Life. In the early hours of this morning, the UK struggling airline Flybe announced it's collapsed and is in administration, leaving flights cancelled and passengers around Europe stranded. The airline was trying to secure a bailout loan from the UK government, but its efforts to survive have been complicated by a slump in air travel because of the coronavirus outbreak. Flybe called itself Europe's largest regional airline. It was serving 56 airports and, as you can see, carried uh, eight million passengers a year. It employs 2,000 people. Their jobs are now at risk. Our reporter Ben Thompson's at Birmingham Airport for us today in the Midlands and sent this. Here in Birmingham, this area would normally be busy with passengers this morning. Uh, 12 flights on the board due to be operated by Flybe out of Birmingham. But those 12 flights are cancelled. They're to places like Paris, Amsterdam, Guernsey, Dusseldorf, Belfast, Stuttgart and Amsterdam. A really difficult time for passengers in what is one of Flybe's busiest hubs. Now, a little earlier, I was talking to one passenger here who told me that his entire trip uh, now hangs in the balance because he was flying from here in Birmingham to Amsterdam to pick up another flight from Amsterdam to Singapore, then Singapore down to Cairns in Australia. That flight now in doubt. He arrived at the airport last night and has no answers yet about what happens next. We're going to rebook a flight for later today and try and get the other money back by the travel insurance or by the credit card. Now, I know you've been on the phone to your insurer for, what, more than an hour this morning. Still no answers. It was Singapore Airlines over an hour. A pod have got nobody who can speak English able to speak with me, so I'm going to try them again in a bit. Um, and my travel insurance is due to home with that. So. And because you don't have any answers, that means you can't try to look into booking a new flight, you can't look into what you might do next. How frustrating is it for you this morning? Really frustrating. But I do know there are flights leaving here at 5 o'clock this afternoon which will get me to Amsterdam and on to Singapore and down to... Uh, but I'm just going to have to play again, I reckon, and try claiming the original fare back in the future. To the airport, those that do are being handed information here because what's worth remembering that unlike the collapse of Monarch and Thomas Cook when uh, the Civil Aviation Authority and a big rescue repatriation effort was put into place. This time it is different. People will have to rely on their own travel insurance if it is covered, but also potentially claiming back money from credit or debit cards uh, rather than widespread compensation that might have been the case for the collapse of other airlines. And it's also worth remembering that airports around the country are very reliant on Flybe services. Here in Birmingham, they're in talks with other airlines to try and replace some of those services to ensure that people can get to where they need to get to. But of course, it means that attention has also turned to alternatives. And for places like Birmingham, that could mean HS2, improving rail services and road services rather than necessarily relying on airlines. But here, a confused picture for many passengers with the news of Flybe officially in administration. Ben Thompson in Birmingham Airport. Let's uh, talk to Theo Leggett, our business correspondent with us in the studio. Theo, just an overview of what went wrong here. Well, this was an airline that had been in financial difficulty for some time, years in fact, and just over a year ago it was taken over by its current owners, uh, so that was Stobart Air, Virgin Atlantic and Cyrus Capital, um, and they promised to put it back on a, a steady footing, but clearly that didn't work. A few weeks ago, we thought the airline had been brought back from the brink when a deal was done between those shareholders and the government. Um, the government agreed to defer certain tax liabilities for the company, to review air passenger duty, the tax on air passengers, and to talk about a loan. Now, there was a loan that was meant to be in the pipeline of up to £100 million, we believe. That clearly hasn't materialised. On top of that, you've had coronavirus. Well, I was just going to ask Theo, to what extent is coronavirus playing a part in this? Well... 
Virgin Atlantic, which led the consortium that took control of Flybe, says this was about coronavirus. And clearly the entire industry has been hit badly because people just don't want to travel at the moment. They're worried about coming into contact with people who have the virus. They're also worried about going to places that are affected and then having to be quarantined or even getting stuck abroad or whatever. So coronavirus is a factor, but you have to remember, this was an airline that was in trouble beforehand. And really the government was going to help out. There was talk of this large loan that would have kept them going through the difficult winter period until bookings picked up during the summer. That hasn't materialized. You do have to ask why that is as well. Uh, we were hearing a little earlier some worries about Norwegian's profits. Other airlines also concerned? Well, other airlines are deeply concerned. Lots of them are having to ground aircraft. They've had to cancel bookings. IATA, the International Air Transport Association, said earlier this week, uh, said last week that it wanted to give airlines scope to, uh, to cancel flights without using their airport takeoff and landing slots. Norwegian today has said it can't um, stand by its profits guidance that it issued just in mid-February. And the reason for that is the impact of coronavirus on bookings. So that's quite significant mm -hmm. because Norwegian has been running up losses for three years. It was expecting to get back into profit, back into the black. Um, and that looks deeply uncertain now. OK, Theo, thank you very much. Theo Leggett, our business correspondent. Now, just to say, we'll have more on that story later. We're going to our Asia Business Hub to look at what IATA has been saying about passenger numbers in recent months.